Hello and welcome to the Mobile UX Marathon, a series of weekly webinars on how to improve user experience and conversion rate on mobile web. And today's webinar title is Introduction to A-B Testing. And as the name suggests, it's going to be about A-B Testing. And while you are watching this webinar, I recommend you to take some notes, some questions down because after all, you can share your questions with us on the UX Marathon website and later on dial into the live stream to get your answer. And the, the website itself has more information about the upcoming live streams, resources, and decks. And where you can, you can find the, the, our website is either you can click the link on the bottom or you can just check the description uh, with your description. And before I begin, I'd like to introduce myself. So uh, my name is Mete. I work on the mobile UX team at Google for the last one year. And before that, I was working as product manager and UX lead. So overall, I have five years of experience in A-B testing topic, where I've uh, run more than 500 A-B tests. And today, I'll walk you through the uh, the following points. So the first one is why A-B testing is important. And we follow, follow up with what is A-B testing, and we'll talk about how to do hypothesization of our tests. And as I mentioned earlier, there'll be live stream sessions too, where we will be covering the case studies of uh, A-B testing with Google Optimize, and we'll be answering your the questions that you have submitted on the website. So if you are ready, let's start. And so this will be an introductory uh, webinar on A-B testing. I recommend you to watch also the, the content that will be delivered by my colleague, Maya Bilic. She will be talking mainly on Google Optimize, how to run uh, your tests on Google Optimize and how, you, how to do personalization. So this is just an overview of a year. And I'm sure you have a similar uh, marketing campaigns over the year as well. It can be like some specific campaigns during the Valentine's Day or some specific campaigns during the back to school or Black Friday or Cyber Mondays. And in between, we are always trying to improve our website, right? But let's think that we just launch a new feature or we just change a small thing on our website in August. Then in this case, What's going to be our benchmark in terms of performance of the website? Shall we look at the conversion values during the July? I doubt it because there was a festival season and we were running some specific campaigns on our web page. Or shall we look at to the performance of the previous year's August? I doubt it because during this one year, we changed lots of things. Obviously, we are expecting the, the performance to be different. This is the this is our current dilemma. How uh, the dilemma of uh, we cannot measure the compare the performance of our uh, new features, and you know, in order to, and when we do it, basically we we won't be able to compare apple to apple because uh, we'll be looking at different periods of time with different parameters. And in order for us to compare the performance specifically and objectively, we should be ha having the following things. So when the users visit our web page, they should be seeing exactly the same hero banners upon landing and same products on sale or same promotions that you are delivering to users. And I'm not exaggerating this, but even they should have the same weather conditions because the performance of your website on a sunny day versus a rainy day might be different too. And how we can uh, deliver these uh, identical uh, situations to our users is by A-B testing. So A-B testing is basically comparing the performance of our website or really small uh, sections at under exactly the same circumstances. This GIF here represents it in a great way. So we are just changing the small section, our web page, 
and we are just comparing the performance of that specific page. And this is the most common A-B testing method, ABN, where we are changing only one section, as you can see on the limit uh, image with blue and red images. But this is not the only uh, A-B testing type. In total, we can talk about three main types. This was the first one. And the second one is the split or redirect testing, where we are basically changing the whole structure of the web page and basically we are directing users to a totally different url and a, a ux experience this is usually valid for campaign specific landing pages and uh, usually this is being used by marketers a lot and the last one is the is the most complicated one is the multivariate testing at the beginning, it might look like an ABN testing, where again we are changing the blue, uh, comparing the blue and red parts. But in fact, in multivariate testing, we are uh, changing the, trying out different, uh, different versions for different sections. So we can, while we are changing an image, A B, we can also testing different uh, wordings for our headings. And the point uh, with this is, when we do it, obviously the number of the variants are going to increase. So I would recommend you to run this kind of multivariate testing if you have enough traffic. Because by running multivariate testing, basically you'll be splitting up your traffic into small chunks. And we talked about, we covered the really basics of A-B testing. And right now let's talk about a real case. And I'll let you think about which is the winner in this test. Basically, this test is about changing the color of the CTA. On the left, we are seeing a orange CTA. And on the right, we are seeing a blue CTA. And I'll let you think for five seconds, which, which might be the winner of this test. It should be enough, I think. And now I declare the winner. And the winner is the orange one. And you might get the right answer. Don't get flattered a lot, because when I when I ask this question, the what which one you think is the winner, I usually see a 50-50 or 60 to 40 percent of split. And this is basically the beauty of A-B testing, because these are the subjective things. We cannot know which one will be the winner. That's why running A-B test is really crucial for us to remo remove our biases out of the equation. But, and the, the point is, statistically, we know that only 30% of A-B tests are becoming successful. And if we put it into other words, basically without A-B testing, there is 70% chance that you implement a change on your website with no or even negative impact on your revenue. That's why running A-B tests are crucial. And in our previous, uh, previous test, we just uh, look at the, uh, we just changed the colors, but I just want to ask you, is there another way us way us for to run an educated guess on this A/B test and basically improve the success of our A/B test? Maybe move from thirty to forty percent of success rate. And the answer is possible. And uh, the answer is yes, because here on the right you are going to see a color wheel, and we we see that the the majority the major color on our web page is green with all the header and stuff. And if we use the contrasting color with the green, we might have a better chance to win because the CTA will be standing out. So the blue is very close to green, but on the end, the red orange is on the other extreme or on, on this wheel. That's why uh, these kind of building hypotheses are really important. And if we run the AB our A-B test blindly, it might be hard for us to solve our problems because A-B test is just there, but it's uh, part of a huge loop. And this is how it looks like, basically. So in order to run successful A-B test, we should be making our hypothesis first. And how we can extract this hypothesis there are different means. First, we can uh, 
get some quantitative researches or qualitative researches, or we can just have some heuristic evolutions. At this web webinar, I'm not going to deep dive on this topic, but I strongly recommend you to check my colleague's webinar, uh, Louis Berry, on the Sierra Maturity Model Framework, where she will be deep diving on this uh, different uh, research methods. And, okay, we already stated that the hypothesization is important, but here I'd like you to present a framework on how to do hypothesization. It's really simple and it starts with a what if question. So if I change an element on our web page, so it can be adding or removing an element, whatever it is, then by doing this change, obviously I'm predicting to get, uh, get an outcome out of it, right? And this reasoning should be due to a ration that I have in my mind. Again, it can be an extract from a user testing, or it, it might be coming from a GA data, or it must be a just in the instinct of yours. It's totally fine too, but there must be a ration behind our A-B testing. And if we follow this framework, we would end up with such a hypothesis for our previous test. And it goes like this. So if we change the color of our CTA into orange, then the click-through rate of the CTA would increase. Due to the display of a con con contrasting CTA, that would attract more attention. It's not because of, I like the color orange more, but because the orange color has a better contrast with the, with the dominant color in our web page. And here, I'd like to highlight another important point. Here you see that the click-through rate is displayed with a bold color. So the other importance of doing hypothesization is when I write down my hypothesization in this way, with the then line, I'll be declaring, okay, what is success for me for this test? And in this test, the success was click-through rate. In other tests, it might be conversion rate, or in other cases, there might be average order value. We should be declaring what is success for our test beforehand, because if we don't do it, if we skip this test, what's gonna happen is, okay, for instance, we're gonna run this test, and at the end, we are gonna say, oh, okay, the click-through rate is lower, but uh, the session duration increase, so this test is winning. But no, if we do so, we'll be basically fooling ourselves. We should be defining what is success beforehand, and we'll be focusing on that KPI for the success of this test. This is really crucial too. And even though we are running some hypothesizations, uh, we'll still be having some tests that are failing. This is the, the nature of the A-B testing, unfortunately. But even when it's the case, at the end of the test, please, I would recommend you to ask yourself this question. The test failed, the test show, uh, didn't show a positive outcome, but was it because of the hypothesis that I put forward or there was something wrong with the execution of the test? Because maybe, okay, the contrasting color hypothesis was correct, but maybe there was a flickering effect. We didn't prioritize the A-B testing code in our web page and it was, and the page was slow and basically the color was changing after 10 seconds that users landed on the web page. Then uh, at this point, we might question the execution of the test rather than the hypothesis. We should be always asking ourselves uh, these questions when we are running the A-B test. And this uh, this was the content that I will I I wanted to talk over and here you can some find some resources that you can change like right later on. So the first one is the the talk that I delivered on the convergence event uh, six months ago. It was on seven things I wish I knew before starting A/B testing, where I covered the hypothesis, the time framework, and looking at the correct KPIs in the A/B testing. Together with that, you can find uh, the best content win on mobile, how to do CRO. It has a dedicated uh, section on A-B testing too. You can check the videos uh, there. They, they are really great content. And finally, there is the help 
uh, optimized help uh, page where you can find the answers of any of the questions that you have on your mind about how to do AP testing on with Google Optimize. And remember that at the beginning, we have mentioned that uh, we'll be launching some live streams again. Uh, over there, we'll be talking about some uh, Google Optimize case studies on A-B testing. And over this session, maybe you have some questions questions about A-B tests. Uh, please do submit them on the UX uh, Marathon website so that we can answer them. I thank you very much for your time. And this would be the webinar series on introduction to A-B testing. Thank you very much.